Hey guys, welcome to our channel. I'm Nathan. And I'm Melanie, and we're the LaRue's. In this episode, we're going to show you how we used a Bathworks DIY kit to refinish our 20 year old shower. Let's get cracking. we're going to open the box up and familiarize ourselves with the directions so we know what to expect. They say step one is to clear all your personal items out of the tub, establish good airflow and ventilation. Step two, using a razor blade or a scraper, remove the caulking from the tub and the walls. Step number three, with a single edge razor blade, scrape down the tub and the walls to remove any soap scum, then sand with 120 or 220 grit sandpaper. Step four is to place a glove or plastic bag over the tub spout or the shower head to prevent any dripping. At this time, tape off any uh, fixtures or walls. Step five, use a vacuum to clean the surface fully. Step six, with a paper towel, wipe the provided liquid primer onto the bathtub and or wall surfaces. Step seven, you mix together the provided paint materials and then paint. Step eight is to wait at least 45 minutes, then remove all your tape. That doesn't seem so hard. Step number one was to remove the doors and fill all the holes with JB Weld Water Weld. And step number two has been for us to get a scraper and start scraping the soap scum. And then we're going to use Comet to really clean this tub down and maybe move on to some awesome engine degreaser. But we will be back for the next step. thoroughly scraped all the soap scum off of this shower that I can get. I'm going to get me a bucket of water and some Comet and some Scotch Bright, Scotch Bright pads and uh, give this thing a good scrubbing and then we'll come back with the razor blade and see if there's anything left. Oh. <laughs> come by. Not exactly, no. <laughs> Luckily for them steps, it worked out well. Yeah, you don't have to put a uh, ladder in the shower. My legs are just long enough. The mask makes your butt look big. I'm just messing with you. Nathan got everything good and clean by scrubbing it with the Comet. So here we are sanding the walls down with 220 grit sandpaper. The directions did tell us that we should do it while the walls were still damp, but we found that that was really clogging up the sandpaper really bad. Uh, doing it dry definitely does create a lot more dust, so make sure that you do wear a mask. And we tried to cut down on the dust that was being made by uh, filtering the air through the shop back with the drywall bag and blowing it out the window. Up to this point, we have scraped it with a razor blade, used Comet and a Scotch Brite pad to clean it, then sanded it with 220 grit sandpaper, and now we're going to do um, add a heavy duty mixture of TSP into some water, and it's a um, all purpose heavy duty cleaner that leaves surface clean without rinsing for. Um, preparation for painting. And uh, so we're gonna wash the whole tub down with that. Um, it also helped us get rid of the sanding residue that we've got left. And then um, maybe even go over it with tack cloth once it's completely dried before we get ready for paint. So that's the, the next step. Now we are working on the final step before primer. She is attacking it with tack cloth. I think my jokes are tacky. 
didn't like that, did you? It's a good thing I love you. And we have to make sure the tub is absolutely 100% dry. So we've got heaters and some halogen lights in here, throwing a little extra heat on things. Next step is rubbing the liquid primer onto the tub with the paper towel. And we are going to kick the ventilation back on because this stuff smells pretty potent. Yeah, <coughs> pretty potent. All right, the next step is to mix the hardener with the paint. And um, once we get these mixed, we have one hour of working time, and then we've got to add it into the uh, non-slip additive. This stuff smells awful also. Definitely gets you a good um, mask and set yourself up with a lot of ventilation because it will fry your brain cells. Five minutes later. How's it going on? Uh, it's thick. Yes? Not particularly like, it's not like latex paint obviously. To spread and stuff, it's kind of thick and sticky. Yes. I'll get back whenever we're rolling it on. Hopefully it rolls on smooth too. But I mean, is it smooth? It's smooth, yeah. Okay. Goodbye, biscuit. Hello, white. It tells you to keep your roller plenty wet, like not to dry roll, which is actually more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, we are officially done with um, that bathroom. What was your take on? <laughs> it's not exactly as easy as I thought it would be. <laughs> no, the problem we ran into is we had a negative ventilation, negative pressure in the room, which was great. So it was sucking all the fumes out of our room and then directly outside. But then we ran into can't see bugs, them little black bugs that bite you, that they're all teeth. And, and um, so they were coming in through the screen and sticking in our white paint. So then we had to flip our ventilation around to where it's positive pressure. And it was not getting the uh, fumes away, even with our mask and stuff. I mean, I don't know if you can see my eyeballs, but... The stuff smells really, really bad. Like I would not paint without a mask and ventilation with this stuff, would you? No, I mean, no, no. It's bad. That's what, uh, you know, it was going well for the first 45 minutes. But then once my face started going numb, <laughs> it's bad. painting was a little more difficult. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, it looks nice. And I just hope, you know, I have some on my hands and stuff. It's kind of got a tacky softness to it. So I hope it dries a lot harder than it is on my hands. Um, it is, it's sticky to paint with. Like it doesn't go on like latex or anything. It it's has like painting a with honey. to it. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that's So it's like trying accurate. to paint yeah. with honey. Um, so... We'll uh, check back here in the morning and, and see if any more bugs have stuck in our paint and um, how it looks. Okay, so we're back after about 60 hours since we finished the painting. Um, we chose to wait this long just because the smell in the house was still really overwhelming after 24 hours. Um, but we did come back and check on it after the 24 hours. And the finish did seem ready to be exposed to water, which is what Bathworks claims that you can shower in it after 24 hours. Um, the kit again was about $50 with none of the fluffy kind of stuff. It didn't have the, the rollers and the tack cloth and like all the tools that you would need, which we already had on hand anyway. Um, I would do this again. So it's not perfect, which for me is a little difficult. You'll ask my husband, I'm kind of a perfectionist. Um, if you have really harsh lighting like Lee did while we were doing it with like really harsh up lighting or down lighting, you can see like some roller marks in it and stuff and kind of up towards the top it has like a little bit of a a run here across the top and in the corners but we're gonna have a shower curtain across it and obviously just like vanity lighting or something so you're never gonna see that stuff anyway uh, it did dry to like a 
I guess in a like a porcelain enameled finish it does feel like it'll hold up really well to things and we chose to get the kit with the non-slip protection it has what feels like a sand product mixed into the paint and you do that with the kit like they come separately and you mix the resin paint in with it and it does feel very textured it feels very um, non-slip and the other thing that we thought about previously was how he discussed for you patch these holes that were in the side of the shower we have a couple chips down here um, in the lip I think there's these three here and then there was one further down here somewhere we considered patching these with the JB Weld water weld and chose not to just because they were so shallow you can barely get your fingernail in them we were a little bit afraid that the JB Weld would pop loose and we wanted to see with the thick texture of this paint and the self-leveling properties if they would fill in and level out and as you can see we kind of took one for the team here so you guys know that these kind of chips do not go away with just the paint you would have to patch them with either their chip repair kit or the JB Weld to, to get rid of them. All right, final thoughts on this project. Um, we chose to use the Bathworks. It is their standard bathtub kit instead of their premium kit. Again, because we had all of this stuff already on hand that they required such as the rollers and the paint trays, the tack cloth, and all of that stuff. We're remodeling this whole house. Yes, yeah, so we have lots of stuff laying around. Um, we chose to do it in white because our tub was currently like an almond or a biscuit color. And biscuit. we just, we prefer the cleanliness of the white. Um, so we ordered two of these kits and we do have a 60 by 34 shower, um, or it's just like a fiberglass shower insert. And we researched, um, we looked at, yeah, Rust-Oleum makes one, um, who else makes I think one? it was really only Rust-Oleum is the only other yeah. one we looked at. Yeah, and this one gets excellent reviews. And we talked to their customer service and they were, they had extremely Oh yeah, very, very nice people. Too. Just answered on the second ring and just... On a Saturday, no less. Yes, so yeah, it was. It was very down to earth. Nice, yeah. nice, nice people. Yeah. So, um... And we are not sponsored or affiliated no, with them in any way, shape, not. or form. We're just, um, figured we'd, um, show you what we did and what we used. Um, so with the, like I said, 60 by 34 insert, we went with two kits. We ended up using about a kit and a half. Um, I was really glad we had that second kit yeah. because I was starting to get kind of nervous with That's one why we kit. were like, uh, probably halfway through, uh, two thirds the way through, mm -hmm. um, I started mixing up the other kit so that it could be setting for the five minute um, time that it took to, to set. And then we also used the um, extra, um, slip the non-slip the, the non additive uh, on the shower and um, and so about time it was ready to be used you would just finish using up what we had had what yeah. we had the directions used. do tell you that you have a 60 minute time limit to use this so by the time you've waited the five minutes for it to mix properly you're down to 55 minutes which seems like a lot of time but it really wasn't like I was extremely glad that the two of us were doing it together because with this size shower, I wouldn't have been able to get oh, no. it finished by myself. We, we were hoofing in it. the hour. It was we were still over an hour. Yes. The paint still seemed okay to use. I wouldn't have been able to get it done by myself. <laughs> no, no, no. It's definitely not a one person it, a shower of our size. Um, you know, maybe one of the smaller um, individual showers. Uh, like person, one like half the size. Yeah, half the size. A person could crank it, it out, but yeah, or but a bathtub or something like that. Trimming trimming the top top of it took. It was actually pretty difficult because the paint was so thick and they recommended using the little foam brushes and it just didn't spread as smoothly no. or as nicely well, as I would have liked. Well, trying to get a crisp line. Yeah, was, there was, was no such difficult. thing as a crisp line. I'm going to have to repaint the walls. The wall. <laughs> but, um, but I think by and large it was definitely, because with our tub we would have had to tear it down to the studs and then build back up and um, we're trying to get in this house soon. And so we didn't want to just strip it all the way down to the, to the studs and so especially when the shower was still in good shape anyway oh yeah and it didn't have any defects to it it was just no. we didn't like the color yeah the color was bad and, and you could tell that the previous couple had scoured it pretty heavy yeah. and cleaned it pretty hard i mean you could get swirl marks they and did stuff live in it here for 20 years so and um but i mean 
and that's where, where you had alluded to that, that there were smears and stuff. Um, she's very, very, very picky. I told you he would say that. Um, it's, if, if you have light up high, you know, where your vanity lights are going to be, it looks immaculate. But now if we get and take like a shop light and get down low and shine up across it, you know, yes, you can see where um, the fumes were getting to me and I was leaning a little heavier on the shower. And, um, and then where we had trimmed the top, um, trimmed the whole top and then we started on the side, um, a good tip is start rolling along the top where you trim. Because as by the, you trim. As you yes. trim. Because, because by the time we got up to the trim, it had tackied up a little bit. And so trying to get those points to blend, mm -hmm. you know, now if you're standing in the shower, you'll never see it. But if you take a, a light and shine it up across, you'll if see. you try really the, hard to find the flaws. Where they merge. You can see it. Um, somehow I got a hair and a paint. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it, but and and then, and then wretched cansy bugs. Um, luckily, it had set up enough that we had bugs stuck all over it. But they were um, they weren't in the paint. Um, we were able so to get them out good. and fix the areas that they were stuck in pretty yeah. easily. So stupid problems. Yeah. Was there any other things we need to touch on? Just the smell. Yes. You have to ventilate with this stuff. Um, if you guys are unfamiliar with positive and negative pressure, um, the way it is, that's our master bathroom. And so our bedroom connects directly to it. So what I did was, was put the bedroom window up and put the fan drawing the air out, um, blowing it outside. And then I opened the bathroom window. So it is drawing the air from, and all the fumes from the bathroom straight through the bedroom and out the outside. And then all the duct work and stuff in the house is actually helping to, to ventilate too. So, so that fan is creating a vacuum and it's drawing air from the dining room and the kitchen and stuff through the cold air returns and so all the fumes are just being channeled right out that window. But then when we ran into trouble and we had to flip the fan around you think oh we're just feeding fresh, fresh air into the house. It doesn't work that way. You're feeding fresh air in but you're also forcing a, a higher volume of air into the bedroom and then it's dissipating through the ducts, through the vents, and then some of it's going out that bathroom window carrying the fumes with it. But it also carries the fumes through the entire house. And that's, that's where we end up with the problems with, because our master bathroom's upstairs, we end up with it downstairs settling, through the whole basement. Yeah, down so. in the finished basement. So, if you're gonna do this kind of project, I would do it the day before you go on vacation or something like that. Um, I'm kind of curious, we'll probably do it in the downstairs bathroom, won't we? Yes. Um, we're going to do it downstairs. There's not as there's no windows in the downstairs basement or bathroom, and so I'm curious how how that ventilation is going to be. Yeah. Um, we're going to get because even with the ventilation we had upstairs, like I said, it was two and a half days since yes. we've done it, and you can still kind of smell it. It lingers. It's we'll be, mostly we'll be gone. Barring some of our SCBAs from the fire department yeah. to uh, to, <laughs> to do work that downstairs. One. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was well worth doing. I um, mean, if you got an old bathtub or an old. Uh, um, Shower, mm -hmm. still suffering from the fumes. <laughs> um, well, and we got paged out last night at three o'clock. Well, this morning at three o'clock. So you'll have to, to, uh, to. We're just sleep deprived. <laughs> yes, look over my stammering. Um, but if you've got an old fixture, this is a way to go. I mean, it, it seems stout. Um, it covered really well. Like I feel like you looks, could cover a harsher it, color, like the old fashioned, like the greens, those like yeah, brown egg colors and the stuff. Pea green. Yeah, that it would. This would cover it well. Oh yeah, I definitely think so because we did two two full coats, mm -hmm. and um, which is what they called for, and it is definitely worth doing. And the sheen is better than what you would originally get at the store. It looks like, it's like a new like a porcelain, porcelain finish. finish. So. It's not like it's not high gloss, but it's a gloss finish to it. Where yeah. It's slick yep. and like. And the floor nice. is grippy. So you won't have to worry about the falls. The walls are nice and slick. I think it'll clean up well. So definitely, definitely think it's worth doing. Yep, absolutely. All right, we'll catch you in the next one. You're gonna tag it on at the end and make me look stupid. I'm not. <laughs>